Okie dokie, so I'm just gonna go back to my basic 100% normal comfort zone uh, view, which is the editing view. Let's just assume that I am 100% done and satisfied and happy with the work that I have uh, made here. Uh, let's, let's assume that that's where I'm at and I'm ready to finish my work. What you'll notice is that there's a couple of big tools up here, uh, one of them called export, and it gives you lots of options, but the one that's most likely going to be helpful to you is outputting a media file. You can give it a name, tell it where you want it to go, um, and then you can tell it what kind of uh, preset you want it to have and what kind of um, format you want it to be in. So obviously you can make changes here. It's really just not, you know, this is, this is all right. This is fine. And then the format. Now this is something where you probably just want to leave it at H.264 for outputting to um, the server. It's, it's going to be a good sort of pretty lossless. If, if all, of all the lossies, it's the least lossy. Um, so you can, um, output whatever whatever it is that you've got going on. Um, I'm not sure that there's any fun thing that you want to do apart from outputting your um, video and audio and effects and such, or whether you want to do anything else. But what you really want to make sure you do is, is tell it where you're putting it in a way that makes sense. You might want to have a special folder for renders, right? So that you can separate your output from any other elements. And this is an external drive I'm working on, not an internal drive. Give it a meaningful name so that you can um, remember what it is. And then you can sort of say, I want the entire source. Um, or maybe you want to um, capture only, say, from your in and out area or a work area or some custom range. You can always add a custom range and uh, tell it what you want it to be. So if I want my, you know, whatever it is I want. And then scaling, you don't need no scaling. No need some scaling. We're good. So just say you want to export it. You can just export it and it will export it immediately with these settings. If you wanted something more fancy schmancy, uh, something more detailed where you have more control over what you're seeing, you can also send it to media encoder. I don't think you need to do that. You should be fine to just click the go button and let it happen. And you can see that it's encoding it. It'll do a little couple of passes and have a think about whatever it is that it's doing. And you're saying, okay, it's been exported and it tells you where it's gone. If I, right? So if we've, we've got the details there and I can then say, okay, I want to go and look for my video. Uh, I know that I have to go digging around in my, um, volume. Uh, so I'm going to grab my woo, thingy and go into Choco and go into Premiere Pro and renders and I have my, my, my thing. So here I can then open this and check it. And this is a really important before you ever submit any kind of video material, not just at uni, but in any avenue of life, always play through the entire thing. Watch it with your eyeballs and listen to it in case you've made a mistake, in case there's a glitch, in case something's wrong. Have a go. Have a play. Check it out. Look at my amazing graphics. Believe me, but the public nursing home, it's, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. But you have to make sure that you um, check that there's nothing wrong with your absolutely gorgeous graphics, which you worked very hard on and made you extraordinarily happy. Oh, yeah. And really just take the time to, to check it from start to finish. Cause just scooching through like this, it's not the same as actually watching it. If for some reason you're trying to watch it and you can't concentrate, go stare at a wall, um, in the distance, you know, release your eyes. Sometimes when you're sitting at a computer for too long, you just kind of get all fatigued with your eyes. Just go and do some long distance viewing at, you know, breathe for a few minutes, come back and just watch it from start to finish and then submit it. When we do want to submit stuff, I'm going to go to SCCI media. Oh, I've got it open already. Hello. You log in. And when you log in, you'll be able to upload stuff. There's a little quick doodad here that says upload stuff. 
So if I want to upload a file and I want to find that file that I just did work on, wherever it, oh, they're all out of order now. That's not very fun. Come here. I like alphabetical order. Oh, wrong one. So if I want to upload this amazing file, it will have a little think about it. And slowly but surely it will finish the job. It takes a little bit of time to do. So you have to be a little patient. And you can see a list of supported formats, which is pretty extensive. There are a few unsupported codecs. So just note that most codecs are accepted with the exception of what's listed here. So once it's it's getting uploaded, you'll see that it will be um, done and then you can edit the details. When you edit the details, you can take tell it to make some changes there, whatever, whatever. But one of the other things that you can do is you can share it because even though it's still being processed, it has a link already. So if you're looking to share your link in your um, i2 submission, you can grab that link from here. If you want to embed it, I'm not sure that students have permission to do embeds in their um, uh, journals and stuff, but if you if you want to try it, you can you can grab that too. But you can just grab the link. Uh, this you can po post into your journal and that would allow you to um, submit this work through a, an active URL.
That's why we disappeared. All right, let's get back over yonder. I've touched the wrong thing. But it's a really good way of, of knowing where, where are you because you can um, set the stopwatch, make your little changes that you want to make, whatever they are. Do, 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 do. It'll make another... If you're curious as to where something is, you can use these to navigate. And you'll, if you've done something that's like a bit of a boo-boo, you can very quickly find it because you can say, oh, I set the stopwatch on the wrong thing. You can go back and change it. So now we have... How long do we... That, whatever that is. And, you know, this is not suggesting that you have to make a graphic that is as beautiful and complicated as this is. But I wanted to make sure that you understood um, how this tool works, because it is using the effects controls to allow you to make all sorts of changes here, not only to the graphics, but also to the video layer. And because the video layer controls everything that appears as well as the graphics, if I say, for instance, were to um, take this opacity down to zero, everything goes away, because the, the video is kind of like hierarchically above anything else. But in this software, it actually visibly appears below the graphics because the assumption is you want to work on uh, the settings of the graphics. I know that that's probably a lot of information, but I think that if I don't explain it, it probably won't make a great deal of sense. Hopefully that helps you understand a little bit about the graphics tool. Um, you can explore this to whatever extent you wish. There's also a lot of uh, templates that are available in case you don't necessarily feel comfortable with playing with this and just want some basic title that you can use. Just, you know, do it, do what works for you. Do what makes you feel like you're in control of um, what you're creating. And I hope that you can have a bit of fun because graphics are challenging, but also uh, very, very, very uh, rewarding if you can get them working nicely.